Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head up to Helsingborg here in Skåne in the south of Sweden once again. And we're going to revisit one of my favourite Swedish craft brews. And this is the latest release in one of the series of beers that they do that I very much enjoy. So for this review, we are going to return to Brewski Microbrewery again. And we're having a taste of their Apricos Faber, and this one in particular is the double dry hopped New England IPA version. But this is a very recent release. This one was released on the 1st of April 2019, so it was released through one of the kind of local and a uh, small batch releases that they seem to do on the first of every month but this guy comes in at six percent abv as i said i really enjoy this faber series that they do that you know there's the passions faber there's the mango faber there's the mango halon faber persico's faber there's quite a few different beers in this series i can't remember all of them to be quite honest with you but this is the latest one that we've released and hopefully it is as good as some of the other ones that i've had i've only reviewed i think the passion faber and the mango faber for you on the channel both were very very nice and hopefully as i say this is another one that falls in the light of that but six percent abv new england ipa with some uh apricots added to obviously so yeah hopefully this is a good beer and as always i hope you guys enjoy my take on this one i'm really excited to try this actually so anyway as is usual with my reviews then i'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that i've done from brewski before no doubt there will be some more in the fairly near future there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway to tell you a little bit about Brewski then on to my brewery notes quickly. So as I've told you many a time, Brewski Microbrewery were founded back in 2014 and they're based in Helsingborg here in Skåne in the very south of Sweden. But the founders of the company are Marcus Jamerson, Johan Bridsen, Alfred Olsen and Robin, uh, Robin Skoglund, all of whom were largely inspired to start their own brewery after drinking the West Coast American craft beers. But Marcus was originally associated with the High Nose brand of beer that was brewed at Hoganis Brewery, a little bit to the northwest of Helsingborg once again. And some of those beers are still brewed there, although all of the Brewski beers are now brewed at their own facility in Helsingborg which you'll find in the old train yard a little bit to the south of the main train station but this new brewery that they have has a capacity of around 100,000 litres of beer per month I believe they've actually expanded it even further than that recently but in 2016 they also started up their own beer festival which is called Brewski Val the first year they had around 40 different brewers there I went for the first time in the second year and also the third year and I will be uh, attending there once again this year because my dad and I always enjoy going to that um, but they've always got a great selection of breweries quite a lot of nice ones from Sweden and the local area and of course they've got a hell of a lot from uh, from different countries as well so you can always find some really unusual things if you go there there's always some awesome food and you know it's just generally a, a good value and also a good value beer festival and also just a really quite nice time actually to go and mingle with other people who uh, really like beer um, but they also used to open up their brewery once a month which they were calling Barsky, but of course now they've got their bar in the actual town itself, which serves a lot of the different Brewski beers that you're not going to find anywhere else, and it also serves an American kind of take on ramen, if you like. They've got an American chef there who uh, cooks up ramen, which I have to say is pretty good. It's not authentic right enough, but um, I have to admit I quite enjoyed it when uh, when I was up there and had a go at it with my friend Pete. So um, yeah, this one should be really quite nice. As I say, this is a series of beer. This brewery, you know, they mainly specialise in IPAs. They do an imperial stout and things like that every so often, but most of their beers are IPAs, New England hazy IPAs, and quite often there's some fruit IPAs in there as well. More recently, they have been doing a few different sour beers as well, but I think it's fair to say this is a sour, uh, this is a sour beer, fruit beer and kind of IPA specialist brewery but when they do have a go at other styles it turns out pretty nicely. The Fever series of course is one they're really well known for. That's probably their most widely exported beer that they're doing these days actually. As I say Passion Faber, Mango Faber, Mango Hallon Faber and there's a few other ones. Uh, Persico's Faber is another one that springs to mind and this one is the latest release there. So if you get the chance to try any of the Brewski IPAs I'd highly recommend that you do. Probably my favourite beer that I've had from them so far was the Conan Double IPA. That was absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Um, 
So that is one in particular I would recommend for you. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about Brewski just now. Like I said, one of my favourite Swedish breweries, and it is cool to have a brewery of this quality uh, down here in Skåne in the south of Sweden. So make sure you check them out if you get the chance. And as I said, this is probably one of the breweries that you're most likely to find exporting to if you're not watching from Sweden. So yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself. If you want to learn a little bit more about Brewski, you can follow them on Facebook and, uh, and Instagram. That will keep you up to date with all the latest goings on there. And of course, you can check out their beer lists on Untapped and things like that. But yeah, let's get on to the tasting of this beer itself, as I mentioned. So as you can see, you know, similar style of artwork for this one compared with the other. Uh, beers in the Faber series. You've got the little Brewski guy on the bottle cap, of course. This one is one of these little stubby 330 milliliter bottles that they like to do. There is the Brewski symbol there. This one was bottled on the uh, well, it's actually going to, this one actually would last quite a while. They're saying that this one would last, I'm guessing, around 18 months, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I would have thought they would have just given this beer a year. But it says on the side here, Apricots Faber, Double Dry Hop, New England IPA. How, how many versions can we make with fruit? Many. As our first beer ever, Mango Faber has conquered taste buds, male and female. Old and young, national and foreign, while we admit to always evolving that beer. Our sole intent is to fine-tune our tropical darlings, making it a worthy tribute to everyone that has supported us from the very beginning. Fruits off to you, mates, and here is a New England India Pale Ale with apricots. So, um, yeah, should be interesting. Like I say, 6% uh, ABV, this one, New England uh, style IPA, double dry hop. So we'll see how we get on. Let's just get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. Nice little bit of smoke on the opening and then we'll get it out and into the glass. There we go, look at that. So yeah, when you consider that this beer is a New England IPA, it's not really surprising that you get this kind of appearance from it. Lovely! I would say more of a yellow colour this one than an orange. Solid finger... Yeah, I would just say it's a one finger head this one actually. Nice solid finger head on this. I would say it's a kind of creamy colour rather than being a perfect white colour to be honest with you. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass there and a few little ones just heading up towards the uh, the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall looks pretty much as you would expect from one of these New England IPAs. If I put my fingers behind the glass you can see this one is pretty damn hazy which again is what you would expect but a lovely quite bright yellow colour. So nothing particularly surprising about this one in terms of its appearance when you consider that it is uh, a New England style IPA. So let's take a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on here. Ooh. That one smells really quite nice. I mean straight away obviously you're going to get the apricot out of it. Underneath that though you can pick out a little bit of mango in this one. I think that they've I think they've used a little bit of citrus, uh, cit uh, citra, my apologies, in the hop base with this one. They never tell you at Brewski what hops they actually use, so it's always a bit of fun to kind of guess what hops they are actually using in here. Um, I would guess mainly straight up that it is a citra malt base in this one. Probably they've got a bit of bittering hop in there as well, maybe like Columbus or something, because the thing I'm getting with this one is... It's quite a distinctive sort of spicy floral note in this one. We can get rid of the brewery notes now. But from what I'm getting with this beer, there is a nice sort of quite distinctive spicy floral aromatic note to this one. And usually it's Columbus or something like that they'll use as the uh, the bittering hop. And I'm just picking up some of those really distinctive spicy floral aromatic notes. I think they'll maybe have used a bit of citra in here. Yeah, I think there's a bit of citra in there, definitely some mangoes, maybe a little touch of lychee in there as well, underneath the apricots. The apricots, of course, are dominating the aroma here, but definitely some nice creamy oats, a little bit of a biscuity sweetness as well. And you can smell some of the nice smooth wheaty notes, but the, as I say, this beer is pretty fresh, you can smell that in the aroma just because of how much the green side of the hops are coming out. You've got a lovely, quite spicy floral aromatic note to this one, some lighter grassy notes and just a teeny a little bit of earthiness in there. I mean, from what I remember of the Faber series, they are pretty straight up in their aroma. Some of them you can get a little bit more of a kind of fruity complexity from, but to me, this one is very straight up. Lovely juicy apricots in the beginning, a little bit of mango and lychee and stuff like that underneath. Big floral aromatic notes out of this one. A little bit of a lighter grassy quality to the beer as well, and some nice kind of um, wheaty smoothness and a little bit of an oaty creaminess in there as well. But overall, it smells like a lovely, lovely beer. Very fresh, very kind of juicy, which again, is what you would expect from, uh, from this beer. I think it's fair to categorise this one 
as um, as a fruit New England IPA, the sort of fruit IPA. But without further ado, then let's just have a taste of this. So this one is the um, the Apricots Faber Double Dry Hop New England IPA from Brewski Microbrewery up in Helsingborg here in the south of Sweden. Let's get stuck into this beer. Slange, skull. Yeah. Again, that's just a really, a really nice easy drinking beer. I mean, this one, if you compare this to some of the other beers you're going to get from Brewski, by no means is this beer one of these big in-your-face beasts like you're going to get from the Conan um, double IPA. No way. This one's a lot more kind of subtle and just um, easy drinking, if you like. I'm trying to remember exactly. I think that the um, Faber series are normally, they've taken the alcohol of these down a little bit I think, but normally they were around 7 or 8% if I'm remembering correctly. This one I think they have taken down a little bit actually. Yeah, um, I do remember these beers being a little bit heavier the first time I tried them. As I say, I tried the Mango Faber and also the Passion Faber as well, both of which are uh, are very very nice um but yeah i really like how this one kind of goes together again with this beer i'm drinking it fairly fresh of course but you can really pick out just how green the hops are in this because it is that fresh so let's try and break the flavor of this one down a little bit then in the middle of your palate you just get that nice wheaty white bready quality that just blankets the middle of your tongue on top of that, you start to get the oaty creaminess in there. There is a little bit of a biscuity sweetness in the middle of your palate as well. But you can feel that the palate just dries out a little bit the further you go into the, the flavour of this one, which is quite nice. So the further you go into the aftertaste of the beer. Yeah. I do like what they've um, what they've done with this beer. It's one, as I say, the thing that's really striking me about this one is just, it is a little bit more easy going than some of the beers that you're going to get from Brewski. And, you know, it really just depends on what you want. Brewski can do things very well at either end of the IPA spectrum. You know, they can give you something that's a bit of a beast and will, you know, give you a kick up the arse, basically. But they can also do these ones that are just nice, easy drinkers and subtle. And to me, this one fits into the latter of those two categories. But regardless of what end you get it from, they'll do it well. And they've done that again here. I like how the apricots are kind of interacting with this uh, this beer a little bit. So let's try and have a look at the hoppy side of things then. Back corners of the palate, there's a teeny little bit of earthiness there. As you come further forward along the sides of your tongue, you've got a nice floral aromatic quality to the beer. And then at the very front um, corners of the palate, um, you can feel that there is a little bit of a dankness or slightly spicy quality in there. It makes me wonder if there is a bit of Columbus, but then around the very front curve of the palate, you've got a nice lighter um, grassiness there which is, is quite nice. The one thing you're going to get when they add fruit to the beer, as Brewski seem to be doing a good few of their beers now, the one thing you're always going to get is that the fruity side of the beer, the juicy fruity side of things, just pushes back a little bit on the, um, you know, on the green side of the hops. You know, it pushes, it just suppresses the IBUs a little bit, I would say. And yeah, it just gives the beer that extra edge of juiciness and you can really feel some of those nice apricot-y flavours there on the kind of front curve of your tongue if you like. But then you start to feel some of the more spicy floral aromatic notes just pushing the way out of it. A little bit of a kind of green uh, grassy quality there as well but you, you can really feel this beer is pretty fresh in its hoppiness. Maybe this is one that I, I maybe should have let this sit, sit for another... Um, sort of week or, or something like that, week or ten days, just to let the, the green side of the hops just settle down a little bit. There is a thing, I mean, I have found with a couple of New England IPAs and things, you can drink them always just a little bit too fresh. I think there is a window um, where you can drink these a little bit too early and maybe I'm just drinking this one very slightly um, too early, if you like. Um, and I think it's a bit of a difference between the New England and the West Coast, actually. I think with the New England ones, you want them the, the hops just to settle a little bit, and then you get more of the juiciness out of it, but if it's the 
But as I say, if it is the uh, the West Coast IPAs, then the fresher they are, the better they're, they're, they're going to be because you've got that, you want a little bit more of a slightly spicy floral quality out of the beer. But this one, I think, again, it's, it's very nice. I wouldn't expect anything less from these guys, though. But if we go behind the front curve of your palate, that's where you get that little oily bubble where those juicy, fruity esters start to come out of the beer. And for me, this one definitely, I think there's a little touch of grapefruit in there. I, I do think there's citra in here. Almost certain there's a little bit of citra being used in here. But if you just go towards the back of that oily bubble, you can pick out some of the grapefruit. You notice know, so if you come in front of that, there's a nice... Um, there's a nice sort of the more mangoey notes and then if you come further forward you can pick out I think there's a little touch of a limey quality to this beer just towards the front of the palate as well you can get a little touch of a lemon limey quality out of uh, the citra depending on what you use it with and then of course around the very kind of front curve of the palate that's where the, the apricot flavours come out the apricot in this beer of course is an adjunct and if you use the adjuncts like I said they suppress a little bit of the IBUs in the beer but I like what they've done with this this is a nice, a, quite a nice a summer IPA this one, it's just got that little bit more of a kind of juicy note to it, but as I say, I'd rec I probably should have left this beer in the bottle, maybe another uh, week or ten days or something, just let the green side of the hops settle down a little bit, because it does, at this point in time, have a little touch of that green hoppy um, burn to it, but probably by the time you're seeing this review, if you've saved the bottle, since then, um, probably uh, you will have it just at the ideal point actually. But yeah, as it stands, it is a really quite nice, um, juicy beer, this one. The question would be, is it my favourite in the Faber series? I'm not quite sure. I have to admit, I do like the mango one. I think the mango one just has a, a slightly more juicy edge to it. Um, but as I say, maybe I'm just drinking this one a little bit fresh. I've had the... Uh, the, the passion flavour and it was okay but it was, it was a little bit of a darker flavour. Passion fruit to me is a much more dark and sour tropical fruit if you like than uh, apricot or mango would be and maybe that's why I like the other ones so much but to me this is a really really nice beer. I should have maybe just left it another week or so just to get um, the maximum amount of it but as it stands very very good. It gets another big thumbs up from me and you know I'm not surprised with Brewski. They do some really really nice stuff. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel then um, I'd say it's a mid-bodied beer, carbonation is very smooth, it's got a good balance between a creamy and sort of oily side of things in terms of its mouthfeel, nice little bit of hoppy bitterness, I think, you know, you're talking about 30 IBUs with this one, maybe even 25, uh, good juicy fruity qualities, both from the adjunct, from the, the, the apricots that they've added to the beer, and also from the uh, from the hoppy side of things as well, from the oily extractions from the hops. But you've also got a nice kind of sweet malt base in there. It does it's mainly smooth, but it does start to lean a little bit more towards the sweeter side of things the further that you go into the aftertaste. But the further you go into that aftertaste, the more of the sort of floral aromatic notes you get out of the beer. You've got that nice juicy fruity quality lying there and also just a slight touch of uh, sweetness from the malt base as well. But overall, very, very nice beer this one. Big thumbs up to Brewski once again. And I do look forward to seeing if they can produce another one of these fever beers. It would be cool to see a starfruit fever one or a, you know, something or lychee fever, something unusual like that. I think that would be a very, very interesting beer for them to have a go at. So we'll keep an eye on that and see how we get on for the future. But yeah, let's uh, let's leave it at that for this beer. Melon fever might also be another very interesting one. But yeah, um, another cool one in this sort of fever series. And I will see if I can review the other ones that I've not reviewed for you yet on the channel over the coming months. But thank you again for watching and we'll leave it at that for just now. So this one was the uh, Apple Apricot's favourite from Brewski, Mike Grubregory in Helsingborg here in Skåne in the south of Sweden. So as always, let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Brewski. Do let me know what your favourite one in the Faber series would be as well. And let me know what other fruits you think would work quite well with this. But thank you again for watching. I will catch you guys very soon. Make sure you check out my social media. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you guys. So until the next time, it's Landry just now. And I'll catch you guys later. The Apricot's Faber and Apricot. New England double dry hopped IPA at 6% ABV from Brewski Microbrewery in Helsingborg here in Skåne in the south of Sweden. Until the next time, stand you just now and I'll catch you guys later. Skull.